everybody, and welcome to Outlaws Chapel on the Beach here in Daytona. We're going to get started again. We got uh, the kids' playground next to us, so I hope you don't mind the sound of children during a Christian service. I know we sure don't. Jimmy, would you mind opening us with prayer? Dear Heavenly Father, I love you and I worship you. Thank you, Lord, for always blessing us. Thank you for teaching us the right way in which to live. Please, Lord, help us deliver the message the world needs to hear in order to have guidance through Jesus Christ, our Savior. And I pray this in your mighty name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jimmy. Well, we are called the Outlaws Chapel. That's right. We are Christian outlaws. In fact, Jesus himself was considered to be an outlaw by the authorities of his day. And followers, the faithful followers of Christ have been considered outlaws by the authorities from that day forward. Now, today in the USA, there are a lot of laws that try to silence the Christian message in our most important institutions, the public schools, the halls of government, and even private employers. Social media sites are routinely blocking and hindering Christian communications. In fact, for the very first time, America has been listed as a persecutor of Christians. And that is specifically because of the outrageous lawsuits by homosexuals targeting Christian businesses and the heavy-handed government crackdown on Christian businesses that choose to obey God rather than submit to blasphemous demands of the militants. And this rising persecution of Christians in America is exactly why we need to see more First Amendment Christians rising up, standing up as a testimony that Jesus Christ is Lord, whether the bad guys like it or not. The United States of America is the only country ever founded specifically upon the Christian Judeo principles found in the scriptures. And that, I believe, is the reason that the USA rose to prominence as the most prosperous, freest, and most influential nation in the history of the world. Now, when a nation honors God, God blesses. And when a nation breaks its covenant with God, there are consequences. The USA is breaking its covenant with God. Our government has openly rebelled against God's moral laws, <clears throat> trashing God's laws concerning marriage, sexuality, the sanctity of life, on and on. The USA is engaging in national blasphemy against God Almighty, and that places a heavy responsibility upon the men and women who are faithful followers of Jesus Christ. Now, in Mark 8:38, the Son of God gives us a serious warning. He says, if anyone is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will be ashamed of him when he comes with the holy angels in his Father's glory. The USA has become an adulterous and sinful nation, and it is the mission of the Christians to call this nation back to the message of the cross and to do so publicly. Don't sit back and wait for your pastor to do it. If you claim the name of Christ, then you have the responsibility to do more than just sit in church on Sundays. Now, when this Christian nation was established, the Bill of Rights became law. The very first item in the Bill of Rights is freedom of religion. It says, Congress shall pass no law respecting an institution of religion, nor prohibiting the free exercise thereof. And number two in the Bill of Rights is freedom of speech. Freedom to preach the message of the cross without fear of persecution. Well, because of laxity in keeping Christian principles front and center in American culture, persecution is now coming upon Christians in the USA. But that does not change our mission in the least. We still have the same responsibility to serve God faithfully as his ambassadors to a hostile world. In Luke 21, 12 through 19, Jesus warned us saying, people will arrest you. They will hand you over to synagogues and prisons and you will be brought before kings and governors for my name's sake in order to give you an opportunity to testify. So purpose in your hearts not to prepare your defense ahead of time because I will give you the ability to speak along with wisdom that none of your opponents will be able to resist or refute. 
You will be betrayed, even by parents, brothers, relatives, and friends, and they will put some of you to death. You will be hated continuously by everyone on account of my name, and yet not a hair of your head will be lost. But the person who endures to the end will be saved. Christians in America have had a pretty easy run for a long time, but that is rapidly changing. The number one threat to Christians today is the militant homosexual movement. They are deliberately targeting Christian businesses, individual Christians, and will soon be openly targeting Christian churches. Their weapons of choice are corrupt judges and government officials who are openly hostile to the Christian faith. The deadliest threat to Christians and Jews around the world is Islam. The world's most violent false religion has slaughtered hundreds of millions of Christians, committed genocide of Christians in the Middle East. And once Islam becomes established in the USA, we can expect the same thing here. Now, God's commandments are clear. The Great Commission of Matthew 28 is still in full force. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. As far as I know, there are no other Christians in the world who have freedom of religion and freedom of speech written in stone in their national laws. The Bill of Rights, I believe, was a special gift of God given to us, the Christians of America, for a time such as this. How can we neglect such a great gift? We should be taking full advantage of these rights every day to proclaim the eternal truths of God to a world that is dying all around us. Will the bad guys come against us? <laughs> oh, you bet they will. If you're not a target of the enemies of God, then you need to get busy and make yourself a target. If the enemy doesn't even know who you are, then you are probably not doing your job as a Christian. I am challenging you today to be First Amendment Christians. A Christian who is not ashamed of the gospel, a Christian who proclaims the truth of God's word with courage and conviction. And when the authorities come against you and consider you to be an outlaw, just remember that Jesus Christ himself was considered to be an outlaw. And when they charge you not to speak biblical truth anymore, remember what the apostles said when the first century courts ordered them to be silent. They replied, we must obey God rather than men. So thank you for joining us here at Outlaws Chapel. When God's word is outlawed, I will be an outlaw. Let's go ahead and close with prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your word and thank you for the freedom to preach it in the USA. Just ask, Lord, that you will give Christians all over this country the courage to stand up and speak out boldly. Lord God, we just lift this up to you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. And now, Jimmy, Faith Rider Jim, is going to bring a message from his Faith Rider buddies. It's all yours, Jimmy. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Bill. Ladies and gentlemen, we will be talking about Acts 238. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, ye shall be. men where by we must be saved now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men they marveled and they they took knowledge of them that the that they had been with Jesus 
And Romans 10 9 says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth that the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. So remember, always take Jesus as your Savior. Follow him all the days of your life, and ye shall be saved. Just like John 14, 6 also says. He says, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes in front of to the Father except through me. So always follow Jesus. Read the read your Bible and believe that Jesus is the one and only Savior. Follow him and you shall be saved. Thank you for following us on Outlaws Chapel, and I'd like to close, and I'd like to have Brother Bill close this with prayer, please. Thank you, Jimmy. You gave us some very important Christian truths. Jesus is the only way to God, and that by believing in Christ, you can be reconciled to your Creator. Lord God, thank you so much for the ministry of Jimmy. Thank you for the faith riders. Thank you for Jimmy's service here at Outlaws Chapel. Lord God, we just lift up this message to you, and we pray that you will open hearts and minds to hear the message of the cross. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.